If you're serious about your self-defense, you know the value of carrying a weapon. Whether we're talking about knives, tactical pens, or even the wham bam thank you ma'am, you know the value of having the edge over your opponent. But let's not forget the beautiful simplicity that is a stick. This weapon is extremely effective, easy to use, and you can find one almost everywhere. It is also, in my opinion, extremely overrated. Plus, there's already a thousand videos on how to use sticks all over YouTube. So, instead of that, today, we're gonna be comparing the stick to my personal favorite weapon, the Tongfa. And we're gonna see which one is actually the better option for self-defense. Now, obviously, for the purposes of this video, I'm assuming you live in a place where you can legally carry a stick for self-defense. If you don't, don't complain about it to me, write your legislature. Secondly, I understand not everybody likes a stick for EDC. That's fine. If you prefer pepper spray, have at it. If you think a knife is a better option, I have a knife video right there. Today, we're talking about the stick. Get over it. Now the good news is a stick is very intuitive to use. But just so that we're on the same page, let's go over some basic fundamentals. The first thing we need to talk about is how do we stand if we're gonna hold a stick? Because if we're doing something like Kali or Eskrima, you're free to stand in a very aggressive weapon forward stance or across the back like this, ready to attack. But that's when you're dueling somebody. That's when you already have the weapon drawn and you're already engaged in the fight. How do we hold our stick if we're not fighting yet? Well, for that, we have several different options. The first one is to take your stick and rest it on your shoulder like this. Second option is to rest it on the other shoulder. I'm basically just chilling, paying attention to my would-be attacker and seeing when the right moment is to strike. Now, as you see, my preferred strike from this stance or from this stance is to use the butt end to create space for my opponent. But if I need to, I can also take a step back and create a full swing. When it comes to the swing, that's gonna be your primary offense from this stance. I can swing down at the top of their head at an angle to the clavicle or traps, across to the body, or up to the chin. Now we also have what I call the shield or crowd control grip. This is where you grab the stick with both hands and use the middle of it to parry or block strikes. And you can also use the middle of this to shove and create distance with your opponent or strike with the far end of it. Or if you wanna create tension with your hands, you can also then release one side and do a flicking strike. Now look, it's all fun and games until someone gets hurt, and the best way to hurt someone is to hit him in the head. But we're about responsible stick ownership here. If I full force swing my stick at the top of someone's head, I very quickly go from self-defense to murder. So instead, I recommend aiming for something like the clavicle, the arms if they're trying to grab you, the body, or the legs just above the knee if you wanna keep them from chasing you. Now I think it's worth noting, today we're primarily talking about using the stick as a striking tool. Whether we're talking about using the far end of it, the butt end of it, or a shoving end of it, we're talking about hitting people. However, if we learn some basic clinch fundamentals, we can use the stick to aid the clinch. Because now I can use the end of it to strip grips, take control, and assist my knee strikes, assist my takedowns. Whatever I'm looking for, I can use the stick to enhance. But on the whole, I don't recommend tying up with your opponent when you have a weapon because it can very easily go from my weapon to his. Now, whether we're talking about carrying the stick on your shoulder or holding it with two hands, there is still one major drawback to carrying a stick for self-defense. If you haven't figured it out yet, I'll give you a second. How the hell do I carry this thing? If we're talking about a telescoping stick, they usually come with a holster that you can slide it into and then attach to your utility belt and carry on your hip. But I'm not gonna do that. If it telescopes enough, you can comfortably slide it into your pocket, but unless you have very good cargo pants, you've now lost that pocket. Now me personally, I like having useful things like a phone and keys in my pockets, and I like wearing tiny shorts, so this isn't the most comfortable thing to carry but I am a big fan of tactical fanny packs. This thing isn't sponsored. I picked it up off Amazon like a plebe, but it works great for all of my outdoor workouts and when I travel. Basically, I have a couple different options. The best one is to take the main pocket, open it up, 
take my stick, dump it in there, and now no one is ever the wiser. Boom, attach it to my hip, and I'm good to go. But if you want to look slightly more cable from X-Men, you can also put the holster on the fanny pack, and now take your stick, attach it to the outside like this, and ta-da, problem solved. Now I can either carry the stick in the main pocket or attach at the holster, whichever I prefer. And by the way, if you're calling this a tactical sling and not a fanny pack, stop being so insecure. Now, the Tonfa and I have a very unique relationship in as much as I was never exposed to these as a kid, and yet it was the weapon I most wanted to learn. So, once I started making that great YouTube cache, I immediately bought myself a pair and set about learning how to use them online. And I came to a really interesting conclusion. The Tonfa is the best blunt instrument weapon for strikers. If you've been spending, let's say, the last 10 years doing Muay Thai, how much does this look like anything you ever do in Muay Thai? On the other hand, if I'm here in my good high guard, well, that's just a jab, and that's a cross, and that's an elbow, so on and so forth. Now, for as cool as I may look having two of these in my hand, you probably won't have both in the real world, so we'll stick to just the one. Now, using the Tonfa is even more straightforward than using a stick. I can punch to the head, punch to the body, hook to the body, elbow, but because this thing is sitting on my forearm, it has now enhanced my ability to hit with my forearm. So if my opponent is grabbing onto me, I can slam with a low block, come up with the high block, inward with the middle block. Basically, every time a Karateka says something like, our blocks aren't just blocks, now it's actually true. Now I know what you're saying. The punches are cool. The block strikes, probably pretty useful. But the reason we like these things is because of the spinning strikes. This allows you to get centrifugal force as you draw the weapon away from yourself. It strikes without you having to really commit to the strike. And I can strike across at my opponent, down at my opponent, up at my opponent. I can, of course, swing the stick out and now keep it at range. Once again, relying on punching at this point. The way you want to spin your tonfa. Instead of death gripping it here to make sure nothing ever leaves your hand, you actually want to slightly loosen the grip, but keep it secure enough to where this rests in your thumb. From there, you're going to shake through the wrist and the forearm and allow the bottom of it to spin either halfway or all the way. But I want to let you know, the fancier you get with the tonfa, the less useful it becomes. Because the basis of this being my choice for self-defense striking is that it allows you to punch and to block basically the exact same way you do empty-handed. We don't really have a spinning fist strike outside of, I guess, a spinning back fist, but you know that's not what I mean. Now, another benefit of the Tonfa is that it has multi-grip functionality, which means I can grab it from the side handle like so, but I can also do what's called the sword grip, where now it turns the Tonfa into more of a traditional stick that also has a cross guard on it. Or I can do what's called the hammer grip and now use the side handle as a hammer to create even more damage. Which means now I can punch, spin, poke, hammer, or slash, all with the exact same weapon. For the most part though, I recommend using the forearm grip because this is a purely defensive way to use the tonfa. If someone is trying to grab hold of me and I bash this thing into their arm, that could only be a defensive wound. And using the tonfa to create a frame to keep someone away from me is again a defensive maneuver. But holding it in the hammer grip and bashing someone's skull in is of course an offensive maneuver, as is turning into a stick and swinging it around, which we already talked about earlier. So if you wanna maximize your legal ability to use this thing, use it as a defensive weapon. But if you're breaking it out in the first place, maybe that's not your concern, but once again, we run into a very big problem. In fact, an even bigger problem. Because how do I carry something shaped like this? I can't fit something like this in my pocket. I guess maybe it could go into a waistband, but that looks kind of ridiculous. And even for as much as I love my fanny pack, there's no room in there for even a small tonfa. Even if we grab something like a telescoping tonfa, that can go in and out of itself to get more compact, it's still about the same size as the wooden one, 
And this is a children's tonfa. Yeah, I'm short, leave me alone. You might opt to carry your tonfa in something like a backpack, but as I talked about in this video here, putting it around your back means there's even more steps before you can draw it. So the stick is good because it's more convenient, but the tonfa is good because it's more natural. But what's the situation where I can use either of these? The most obvious one is law enforcement and security. Using these things as force multipliers is a great way to take control of another human being without doing serious, immediate bodily harm. As far as home defense goes, I know a lot of people will carry a stick or a t-ball bat under their bed, and that's a good idea depending on how wide your hallways are. The tonfa is also good in theory, but I can't actually recommend it for a few reasons. Firstly, and most importantly, seeing someone charging down a hallway holding a t-ball bat is terrifying. Seeing someone coming at you like this means they're a weeb. Another good excuse for these weapons would be if you're on a hike, camping, or running. A situation where you don't have all of your normal accoutrement with you, but you want something to help protect yourself. Ultimately, as with all things, it comes down to you get good at what you train for. If you spent the last decade swinging a stick around, you're probably gonna pick this as your weapon of choice. If, however, you've been doing boxing or kickboxing, the tonfa might be a good option for you. So, when it comes down to stick versus tonfa, my answer is yes. Subscribe so I can buy more weapons.